All right, back for another happy hour. It's four o'clock on Thursday. That's right. We got a little uh, a little lead better lead in from Pearl Jam. That's always Pearl Jam. That's always oh. important. Hey, love Pearl Jam. Never got to see him. In sh Have you seen a show? Yeah, oh yeah, long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. You, you follow him around like fish? No, never did that. But uh, <laughs> Mike it's been Bruno. a while. Bruno's in. Hey, Bruno, appreciate you coming in there, buddy. Does he win an award for being first. He does, and uh, he wants to uh, he wants it's to Cassie. donate some. Giveaways, Cassie Mangle Tiger. She's super fan. Oh, yeah. Hey, she just yep. got a new house, I think, didn't she? Well, unfortunately, she had to move up to the snowy state of Wisconsin and then eventually to Minnesota. Uh-oh. It's going to be cold. Yeah. Very cold. She doesn't want to talk about that, but... Uh, well, Delta's ready when she is. It's the truth. Absolutely. Cassie says, hey. Absolutely. Man, I tell you, though, this market is on fire, isn't it? It is blazing it is hot. blazing and hot. It's, it, it's it's hot and still no inventory which is the problem no inventory but people are still finding houses we got sellers they are. with multiple absolutely offers. we've got more buyers i heard some i was talking to people maybe a week or so ago that said you know that this wasn't a great market but it really is a great market i mean i'd rather it are, be this way these are great problems right i mean years ago we had people in foreclosure nobody had equity uh those are problems people have money now we have we have problems, but well, these I got, are good we problems. all got problems. These are good problems, okay? Uh, houses are moving, people are getting under contract, and then they're they're going to find new houses. And absolutely, it, it's really busy right now, which is good. I mean, and we're getting them closed, which is good. I, I'm a little worried about the appraisers uh, coming in. You know, they're they're keeping a lid on us, uh, which has been a problem. Man, I tell you, I've got I've got nothing. They're bad. I've I mean, got but, one right now. That's a VA. Um, really need some help here. I, I'm very uh, upset about this, and I think it's a problem. And I've talked to other real estate agents in the market, and I've had real estate agents tell me that they will take uh, other offers over a VA just because of appraisal issues yeah, with right. slowness, with the value. Um, and that's solely on the appraisal. That shouldn't be. I mean, this is a... Uh, the appraisal process for a VA is a little different. It's a little bit tougher to get through. We have to order it through a VA portal, and it goes to a different appraiser. But I tell you, we're trying to do a service to our hey, military Trey. veterans, um, and it shouldn't be held up by the appraiser. Well, that's right, and it's a tough appraisal. Let's don't. It's much like a FHA appraisal. It um, is. It is, but you know the, the the VA loan process itself. This is why I was surprised. The VA loan process itself is pretty easy, and it's a great loan. So I was just surprised when agents are hesitant on a VA, mainly well, because I, of that stuff. I think one of the big issues is we're hesitant on it if we have the options, which we're not used to having yeah. nine other offers. Right, right. And, and and it's frustrating, you know. I mean, if I'm a if I'm a seller and I have someone over here, I'm, I was about to go say cash. Of course, you're going to take the cash. I know you hate to hear that. A cash. What buyer. is cash? What is a cash buyer? Yeah, that didn't make sense. Trey Favor. <laughs> Trey, Trey, Trey doesn't like them Trey either. Trey would never buy, pay, spend cash on a house. I mean, who doesn't want to pay? I mean, we're, no. we still got great interest rates. But I tell you what's driving me nuts. There are a lot of these younger folks coming out of school, and they'll be like, oh, man, woo, rates at five, near five. That is awful. I'll never pay that. Yeah. And you're going, well, it really is kind of good. But if you think about it, a whole generation has gone by where yes. we were from normalcy. Yeah, yeah, and they've never seen rates this high. They've never seen rates move, really. <laughs> um and Rob and Rotor Lloyd, good to see you. Thanks for tuning I mean, in. it is so true, isn't it, that rates have not... I mean, I remember you saying in 08, this was... Well, I'll say 09. I want to get past the yeah. bad times. I remember you saying, you coming in, talking to my team, and you were going, yeah, we, rates are probably increase into the year. Yeah, yeah. And then you stopped and saying it year. about 2012. Yeah. You're yeah, like, like, like every up. Every year, it's like rates are going up, rates are going up. Well, this year, they're finally going up. And we've got had another... You know, five or six days here, a little run. The rates have moved up a little bit again. But still, you know, uh, overall, they're, you know, the economy's doing well. The reason why rates are going up, the economy's doing well. We've got tax cuts coming. That's uh, right. People have equity in their homes again. The housing market's Absolutely. doing well. The stock market's doing well. So it, we kind of need it. Even though the consumer's going to look at the one thing and they're going to say, my interest rate's higher than my mortgage. Well, everything else is better. So Overall, we're in a great. We're hey, it's a great economy, great state of the economy. Well, we're a great state of the economy. I mean, it's stable. I mean, you know, I always say we could be, you know, just go to any of the foreign countries. We could be in their economy. We could be in Greece. Well, that would suck, <laughs> right? Because their economy sucks. Well, I've never been there, but uh, it Eva, like fun. how are you? New York City coming in hot. How are you, Eva? Um. Anyway, you talk about real estate, boy. Can't, 
I mean, New York night City. and day. At no tell. Eva, what are you paying in New York City for rent? What do you pay up there every month? That'd be interesting to find out. Because, you know, it's funny. People here complain about $1,200. Mark Wood, how are you? Uh, let's see if we can get an answer from Eva. Uh, anyway, you know, hey, did you see this? Amazon, we talk about Amazon all the time, but I'm fascinated with their business model. They're now going to do, in, car, in, in I believe it's 37 cities, they're going to do in-car delivery. If you have this thing called uh, Amazon Key, which is part of their, they're going to do with the houses too. But they're going to, they'll literally have a key to your car. If you're, right now it's only GM and Volvo, because I think they're all part of that family. They're literally going to be able, the delivery driver's going to be able to pop your trunk, put your package in, and then let you know it's about delivered. I wonder if that's part of the, uh, the OnStar it is. It's, it's related to OnStar. Yeah, that's what I figured. Uh, they're tying that was, in. That was big with the GM products was uh, OnStar, and that, that would obviously be the only way that you could uh, get, gain access is through. Well, Amazon wants access to your entire life. Oh, they're, they're tracking everything, right? But, but Amazon's amazing how they've got enough money to do whatever they want to do. Any ideas they have, they, they can fund it. Right? Any problem. They, they, and at the end of the day, they're problem solvers, which is what good business people do, right? They solve a problem you may not have known you had. And the, and the amazing thing with them is they can afford to lose money on ideas, right? They, they sure can. I, of course. So, so they could try this and it doesn't work, then they can stop. But they, they've just, they're, they're, they've generated so much cash. Look at Trey talking about, he's got a client paying $3,500 in rent. Trey, a $680,000 house here, it sounds cheap. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. I got some stats later on of the... Uh, Average salary for different different states. I think uh, New York was one of the absolutely. One of the hey, Lindsay. Ones, obviously, well, you know, uh, the other thing we want to talk about was, you know, you know, in this market, folks have a plan. You know, I was listening to if anybody was at Southwest Flight thirteen eighty that had the blow. I almost said blowout. It made me think of my daughter when she was got a baby. The Brinks truck of uh, koozies today. Yeah, that's right. Um, but thirteen eighty. Did you listen to the audio of the pilot as, as they're landing? No, I heard uh, you. It's calm. You, you were telling me she was just ice. I mean, solid as a rock, calm. And I started thinking, how does that relate to what we do every day? And how can how can that benefit our clients? Well, staying calm in the eye of the storm, which, I mean, there's no bigger. I'm not trying to equate what she did to buying a house or selling a house. But the, the person that stays the calmest in the transaction so, is going to have an advantage because everybody's so emotional right now. Should I not have been yelling at the appraiser this morning? Probably not. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't yell. Well, anyway, yeah, who I knows, was upset, right? But. but but my thing is you make irrational mistakes when you get that is true. too emotional. That's true. When your emotions get too high and you make decisions there, then there's factors that, that shouldn't be involved in the decision at all. I mean, you're not thinking logically about... How are we going to progress and, and improve the situation? You're just right. getting... What's the I mean, next step? Yeah, you're getting emotionally uh, agitated by well, cause what's I, going on. Because I think what you really want to do is you want to be thinking, and this may be the lawyer in me, but I want to think two steps ahead of where we are now. What will be my reaction if positive or negative? And I think that right now, you want to be able to make a rational decision as quick as you can. Be yeah. Because if you... Go, oh my god, and you freak out, you lose your, all your uh you know, all your beans get spilled, or whatever they want to say. Yeah. Uh you you run into a risk where you don't respond quick enough and as strong enough, or quite frankly, there are many times where we need to get out. Right? We 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 don't need to be in this negotiation anymore. We're gonna overpay for the house or we're we're gonna undersell ourselves, or as a seller, we, we haven't thought everything through that this guy may be paying less, but he may actually be a better person for the house or she uh you know sometimes when sometimes when you get emotional you get uh maybe you make assumptions based on the situation based on those emotions which are incorrect a lot of times like if you come back with a short answer i may think you're you're mad at me about something or or, or you know and then i may go down this rabbit trail right. that, of, of something that's not even true and, you might or just, relevant you might just you, you know your child might be sick this morning so that's why you reacted the way you did so it's better to challenge those uh things and then decide what the best outcome is going to be right and don't settle i think the biggest thing right now what i'm seeing is i've seen a lot of people starting to settle and they shouldn't go into an apartment live on love like you did when you first got married 
and let's go into that apartment for two months and then let's get keep looking. It gives us options. And I, I think that, that sure beats buying a house. Live on love. That's, Living on that's love. The to the show. That's right. Uh, Caroline, how are you? Good to see you. Well, man, I, I pulled up some stuff today. I was looking through uh, Keeping Current Matters. Yep. And that's a, a real estate uh, site. They, they put out a lot of good content, a lot of good information. And I thought this was interesting just the, because I know there's some myths out there. Uh, some homeowners feel like you have to have an 800 credit score and you have to have 20% down Absolutely. to purchase a house. And they put out some information that the average FICO scores back for the last probably five years in 18 is 722 for all loans. Average wow. FICO 722, conventional 750, wow. FHA 670. And, and the reason for the score. FHA being lower is? Well, typically FHA will, will accept, uh, was more lenient on credit. And the terms are usually better with those lower credit scores because conventional loans with a low down payment, uh, also it has a low down payment, but conventional with low down payment gets hit a lot more in that and under yeah. 700, gotcha. 680. Uh, you have so you're better of off there. To the uh, mortgage insurance and the interest rate. And the average down payment for first time home buyers is 6%, and wow. repeat buyers is 14%. Obviously, the re there's reason there. Right, because yeah. people are selling their homes, so hopefully paid equity. it down. Yeah, they've got some equity. And that's another thing we talked about earlier in the show. People do have equity now, which hasn't been it's the been case in, in years. Absolutely. Um, so I also want to say, the, in relative to interest rates, the um, average interest rates in the 70s, 80s, 90s, 12% in the 80s. Wow. So this 5% that we were talking about earlier, not too bad. Yeah, 8% in the 90s. 6% into 2000s, and wow. now about 4.5%. When we say 2000, we're talking until about 2006, something like that? Yeah, yeah. So Where were we in the boom? Like right there at the top. Where it were was we? around 6, 6.5, I think, before. And, and houses were moving like hotcakes. Yeah, yeah, before things. I, I preferred those loans, trouble. right? The no-doc loans. Do you all remember that? I mean, it was no documentation. Oh, yeah, I make 800000 a year, no problem. Oh, yeah, yeah. You need documents? No, we don't need anything. We trust yeah. you. Yeah, we'll just we'll just do that. But uh, I thought that was some some great information there that that people would help. You know, back to that. Uh, uh, another thing I found on there was minimum salaries they looked at across the country for homeowners to buy medium priced homes, assuming that your house payment is thirty percent or less of your income. Right. Alabama was thirty seven thousand of the average in income. The average salary needed. Wow. To buy a house. Uh, the highest was California at eighty nine. I'm shocked that we're not first. Right. The lowest was thirty one thousand. Arkansas, Michigan, Indiana. Michigan. Yeah. Really. Just some interesting stuff, huh? Man, I guess Detroit brings them down. Uh, pretty heavy, right? Yeah, the car business. Uh, I mean, has been at one that point, right? For a long time. Yeah. I mean, uh, but but you Valerie know, Morgan's watching. You quit? Was it? Is it Quicken that is turning that around? Uh, yeah, Quicken's up in Cleveland. Oh, they're Cleveland. They're not. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Cleveland, yeah. The, the rocket place. Jonathan Riddle, how are you? Um, anyway, Money Magazine comes out. You know, we, we, we like to go through some articles occasionally. Money Magazine came out with the top home improvement uh, projects that actually show a return on investment while you're living in the home or you're going to get it back on sale. Because there's a lot of frivolous things we do, you know. And I, I thought, you know, it was interesting, you know, of course, the number one room, you know it, that that is renovated by homeowners more Guess than any. Guest bathroom. Wrong. Oh, man. I thought I knew it. Man, you're terrible. <laughs> it's the kitchen. Of course it's the kitchen. It's the kitchen. Everybody talks about the kitchen. And what's really crazy is that a third of the owners spent over fifty, is it $50,000, and one in ten said they spent over... Ten thousand dollars. I know I put a hundred on our notes, but it's uh, or maybe it is no, no one in ten. It's over ten thousand. So they're spending real money. Yeah, and you know the thing is, and I've talked about this before. Is it's funny how people spend a lot of this money when they're selling the house or when they get close to the end of living in the house. Never got a chance to live. Yeah, in so it. you never get the chance to enjoy it. Go ahead and make those changes now if you're going to be in the house for another five or six years and live in live in the newly remodeled spaces. So you don't have to, Absolutely. to do it right at the end well, and, then, and then sell the house. It's obviously not one of the most returned because we want to talk about, we're talking about return on investment. So, you know, here's some stats. Those that spent 
$60,000 or more. I mean, we're talking a pimped out kitchen, I assume. You know, only earn back about 60% of what they spent when they sell the home. Because they overspent. Right. And then if they spent 20000 they were getting back about 80%. So if you can find, and, and you know, I started thinking to myself, well, let's just go lower. Well, they can't really go much lower if you're yeah. going to do a, a full renovation, you know. Yeah. And, you know, Trulia, everybody knows Trulia, uh, owned by Zillow. They looked at, at search habits of people on their website, and they looked at the two most scrutinized rooms. In other words, I, I, it's, my guess is that they were looking at time spent on different pictures. Yeah. Was, you were kind of right, the master bath and the kitchen were the most scrutinized. Um, yeah, can you believe the, the amount of data that they look at now? I mean, they even know how long you're... You're looking at pictures of the kitchen and pictures of the master. Bathroom. And they have something, a, a program tracking that and giving it's amazing. you. It is nuts. And, you know, I thought one of the quotes that one of the authors gave was, cost is not equal to value. And oftentimes that's what, but I have put on a new roof. Oh, but I have added this. I've had, uh -uh. doesn't equate, don't think of the two as one and the same. And, you know, a lot of these, some of these uh, issues with the values and uh, stuff came up when we went through the problems 10 years ago with the uh, foreclosures and the values. So appraisers are now, they're, they're not able to give dollar for dollar for stuff. They really have to find comps in the area. They've got to compare it to, to houses in the neighborhood. And sometimes that's why you may have spent more than the guy down the street, but that's still the house we got to compare you to. That's still the value we're Absolutely. working off of. Absolutely. And all right, so let's walk through them. Here's, these are the ones that did return at least some value, or better value, that is, while you're living in it or when you're upon sale. The, the smart light bulbs, which I know you don't have in your house, either do I. They're the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, you can control with your phone, up and down. But what's interesting, I really did the math on it. And, you know, supposedly these Philips Hue light bulbs are one of the best, huh. right? $50 gets you four light bulbs. And I went, oh, my God, that's terrible, right? But they last 15 years or 15,000 hours. Pretty good time. I mean. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the change in light bulbs. They say it should. You should be able to cut your light bill in half. Now, I say the light bill. I sound like my grandmother. But what we're talking about is the electrical portion relative to uh, to lighting. Right. Which, with kids, gets left on all the time. Yeah. Um, so there's that. And then, you know, obviously pigs say, Hey, what do I have to do to get that? You obviously are going to have to have a hub of some kind of monitor, the smart, which, which, you know, the Alexa, Apple's Alexa, the home kit or the Google home or any of those type things. Yeah. I know the the nest, uh, thermostat that we put up recently monitors a lot of that data kind of like stuff. That. Yeah. It, it monitors usage and, it's and fascinating. how many hours it's running and things like that. So that's, I think that's a pretty cool And you can feature. turn it, like when you leave, you can turn it up to a yeah. hundred. So everybody gets burned out. In the house, right? Yeah. Everybody Light tricks left. On them. Yeah. Everybody right. left in the house. Just painting um, it all up. Painting, and this is one we talked about before, obviously, that they say obviously brings uh, value is painting those walls. There's right? Dubendorfer. Uh, hey, buddy. Obviously, that's a good one. You know, the other one they said was talking about fertilizer and weed control. We see this all the time, and it really is a Man, massive I'm telling you, just driving problem. through neighborhoods, I mean, those ugly yards stick out like a sore thumb. And the, you know, the beautiful yards obviously look great, but I mean, that can, that just turns somebody off immediately. Immediately. I mean, and you are asking for a low ball offer, right? Well, you're, because you're, you don't I, take care of the outside, yeah. are you going to take care of the inside? Yeah. A lot of car dealerships wash the cars all the time. They're always shiny and new, right? Because as soon as you walk up, that's your first impression. The yard is that's the first a impression. That's a great example because, exactly, the inside is unaffected. It's, it's going to smell new. It's going to do everything. But you know what's interesting is that they said that of the average uh, cost in order to get it back good or weed-free, I guess you will, yeah, is about yeah. $330, but returns a $1,000 at sale. Yeah. I, I tell you, the, one of the hardest things for me, um, the yard maintenance, was the fertilizers and the weed control and all that stuff. Now, I've got somebody doing it now, obviously, and... Much better. Amazing. I wouldn't trust Amazing. you either doing that. You're going to save some money going to Home Depot and buying the Scott's Lawn Care once a quarter, but... You're not going to do it. Yeah. If you're going to do that, real. then that's great. There are some people that get out there and love on their yards every week and do oh, good an for amazing them. job. They're rare. Yeah. 
you know, the other I'm them, not one of them. Me either. I don't even own a lawnmower. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but I ran into the mistake one time when we were, we have been married like two or three years, and I had gotten a yard guy for the whole time. And finally, it dawned on Amanda, hold on, if I'm responsible for the inside, how come you got somebody yeah, doing yeah. the outside? <laughs> we getting a maid. Yeah. Like, not, not full-time by any means, by the way. Uh, just or, every two or weeks. Or you're going to start doing some dishes. Absolutely. Carrie, yeah. how are you? Becoming Ballinger. Isn't that right? Hashtag Becoming Ballinger. Uh, she's got a uh, son getting married. Uh, that's awesome. That's exciting. All right. Check the insulation in the attic. Real big. They, they say... 11 inches of fiberglass. 11 inches of fiberglass or 8 inches of cellulose. I, I think what most folks want to see that fiberglass, I believe. Cellulose. Uh, R. Kelly just joined in. R. Kelly. Oh, that or R. Kelly. Yeah. Not not the, uh, the one that liked the, little kids. The R. Kelly. Oh, the, oh yeah, that's yeah. that one. Right over there? Yes. Okay. Uh, shop around and find good deals. Yeah, you can find. This is one of the things that I highly encourage you to not just, obviously, it's not a do-it-yourself. You would spend hours hauling bags oh, up there. Man. Literally, you can find guys down. T I, I found them downtown. I mean, these guys were, I don't want to call sketchy. But they were cheap. But they're putting the same insulation's insulation in my mind. That's going down. You know, it's fiberglass. That's a dirty business. Yeah, yeah. So they literally run this hose from way up on the street all the way into the house. And I remember my wife saying, Are "These work release guys." I said, "Amanda, they cheap. That's all that matters." So you found you a discount. I found me a discount. I, that's I, call I, your sweater for you. Right I there. do not discriminate. Um, no, that's true. Window replacement, and this is one of the ones that you know, really can get some good value in return. They talk about, and they say that if you can keep it around $5,000 for your entire house, based on the average home, you should be okay in getting a decent return on that. Yeah. And I'm telling you, windows are one of the hardest things to do, right? Because it's going to save you on energy. It's going to save on uh, the temperature because they, they release the air in Absolutely. the summer and winter. But man, it's expensive, isn't it? Oh, it's really expensive, and you and need it, to be careful. And it's not like a brand new kitchen that you're going to walk into <laughs> every day and love it. <laughs> uh, wow. Okay, Michael, so we're leaving that good. alone. But uh, it's not like a brand new kitchen you're going to walk into every day. They're, they're windows. They are. And people, be careful when you're talking to a lot of these window companies, these big name companies. We have some of them here that are national brands mm -hmm. that will try to sell you a whole window unit when you don't need one. The glass is broke, something like that. You can get what's called a the sash, which is the movable part. You know, that's what we think of as a layman, as the window. Yeah. The part that I go and I pull up and down. That costs about half the cost of a window. So if you're doing a one-off, just remember you can buy the sash kit. Or, quite frankly, the older ones, a lot of these wooden windows, you can just buy the glass replacement. Yeah. You go right in the middle. So I imagine that's a tough decision for homeowners to make once you got a window salesman telling you you need something else, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you need the whole thing, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. Bathroom remodels. This is, you know, probably one of the sexiest. And I don't mean like I think it's sexy that you have that, but, like, women love it. I mean, this is where they're going to soak. But the problem is folks generally overdo it in the bathrooms, yeah. right? We're talking 60, let's see, here's a stat here. Uh, especially when they do a luxury remodel, which means adding space adding uh, heated floors, frameless showers, any of the real high-end stuff, yeah. uh, they're averaging about 61000 or more, and they only recoup in about half of that. So that's about 30000 It's a terrible investment. Yeah, so that is definitely something if you – that is a personal preference type of thing. If you're remodeling a master bathroom, you are doing that to your taste, something that you want to enjoy. That's definitely something that you would want to do – when you have years left in the house to enjoy. Your typical remodel on a bathroom will get you about 70%, though, uh, the, where you're not changing where a you're lot. You're not spending a lot. Of, yeah, you're, you're, you're just doing tub uh, we're taking vanity. Out, we're taking out the brass fixtures. The and, brass fixtures. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, next one, hardwood floors. This is an easy one to realize, is that installing this hardwood floors, the average lifespan of a uh, hardwood floor is about 25 years. Right, so it should last about 25 years. Quite frankly, they should last longer. It's probably the manufacturers that don't want it to last too long. But 25 years versus carpet that can go about 10. So is shag carpet coming back? Shag, yes. Uh, I call that frisé today, right? Frisé. Frisé. Okay. Uh, but that's simple math. If, if you have a choice between carpet and, and wood, 
for a lot of reasons. Go with that wood because literally you're going to, you're about a third of the way in with hardwood, you're replacing carpet already. Yeah, and I think, uh, yeah, I think that um, with with the germs and the you know the consciousness about all that carpet is is not a preferred. I I, I don't I mean flooring. Uh, I think some people like it in their bedroom, but. Yeah, uh, I, I would take the risk and go up there with the hardwoods. It, it, it does cost a little bit more. Solar panels, which has not made it real big here in Birmingham yet, but... Elon Musk is trying to. He is, and fifteen dollars to $30,000 is the average cost to yeah. install these. And one of the, you know, you say, well, that's a lot of money, but the, I believe even under the new Trump tax plan, they're going to keep that 30, I think it's 30% or 30% uh, tax credit. Yeah, what's what states is that most popular? California, I think Oregon, the West, where they get West, it. absolutely. Yeah, where they get the majority of the. Sun. And they're saying you're going to get some of the savings back per year, about five hundred to fifteen hundred dollars a year in savings of electricity, right? I tell you, one interesting thing I saw was a there's a congressman. Ironically, probably uh, he's smart because of what I'm about to tell you. But as a hobby, he decided he would take. It, he saw on on eBay or something where they were selling an old Tesla car battery. Right, and so he took the car battery and got an electrician buddy to rig it to his system, his electrical system in his house, and he literally can run his whole house. He said if he has sunlight, because it's tied to a solar panel for about three days wow. off of that. Wow. Uh, you know, and he said, uh, you know, he's not trying to be one of these off the grid guys. He just says, hey, it's cool. But yeah, there saving was some, money. There was some talk about Tesla going into that, going into home batteries. South Carolina, it's big, obviously. Solar's big in South Carolina. And I just said because they get the majority of the sun in the West. They get as much sun. It's just uh Well, yeah, there's no trees that's there. That's pretty good. Pretty right? Good. Um, talk about the last one. Can you guess? Hey, don't look. What it, what delivers the most bang for your buck? What one repair? One repair will get you a, a solid return on investment and doesn't cost that much in a home. The The, the one repair... That would get the most it's, bang it's, for it's, your buck. It's not, it's not, I'm not talking small, just fairly large, but meh. I would say something in the kitchen. The garage door. Garage door. They say that you should see about a 98% return wow. on investment because it means so much. You, you talked about it earlier when you talked about the landscaping. We talked about fertilizer and all that. Well, what's the one thing that acts as we all see it? The garage Man. door. And you see people's mess in there. Put Ooh. it down. That's a that's an issue. I was right? I was saying something about that in in the neighborhood this week. By the way, less than a thousand dollars. Bunch of junk in his garage. Hey, by the way, I'm telling you, the garage doors. You can get a perfect. We we got some uh, guys here in town. I know that do a phenomenal job, and they're not as expensive because I think a lot of us are afraid. Oh my gosh, I don't know what it costs to put a garage door. It seems big. Yeah, garage doors are pretty easy. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I mean not for you and I, but it'd take yeah. us a week. Oh, but yeah. Uh, I'm not anyway, out any garage yeah. Doors. Well, let's talk about millennials. Uh, Man, we talk about them all the you time. You know, uh, keeping current matters again had had an article Be best states for millennials, and this was a survey they did. Thirty key metrics ranging from share of millennials to millennial unemployment rate and to millennial turnout voter Larry turnout Toth. rate. Top five best states: Washington D.C. Also ranks highest in percentage of millennials already living there. Huh. Right, huh? Interesting. Yeah, the capital politicians. Yeah, politics. shootings. Shootings. Huh? North Dakota, the lowest. They're shooting, but they're shooting animals. Unemployment rate. I would never picture that many that that to be a great millennial state. North Dakota. I, North Dakota. Where are they go? Oh, they're going for the gold rush. That's what it is. Yep. Still paying in for gold. Making money. Minnesota, highest millennial home ownership rate. Massachusetts. Minnesota. Yeah, Minnesota. That's where Cassie's going. By the way, I know two Kirby's from there. That's the only people I know. Minnesota what, Cassie. I know Kirby Pocket and another Kirby that's an agent. Kirby Pocket, that's it. Minnesota Twins. There you go. Massachusetts, highest percentage of millennials with health insurance coverage. <laughs> it's because it's mandatory in the state. Massachusetts, Iowa, ranked number one in lowest housing cost for millennials. Iowa? Yeah. How many people live in Iowa? A lot, apparently. A lot of millennials. A lot of millennials. So where'd Alabama rank on this millennial list? So we were uh, 47. <laughs> Number 47. 
Yeah, I don't, I, I think, you know, we don't like, to, well, you don't like to talk politics very often, but I have a feeling politics plays into this. That could be true. We tend to be a fair bit more conservative here. Let's see, some of the conservative states, I guess, are in the 40s. Yeah. Down but, through here. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what is surprising 22's is... 22 is California. But look at South Dakota's on that list. That's surprising. North Dakota's too. They're smoking weed in Colorado, Colorado so nine. I get that. Seven is Utah. Huh, interesting. Now, um, the top... Hold on, hold on. West Virginia. What in the world? No one wants to go to West Number Virginia? 50? Oh, the last. Hey, West Virginia. Absolutely. Home of Signor Charles, uh, Karen Charles' husband. Now, the... Uh, Top five states with the highest average millennial salaries. I, uh, D.C. again. Well, New York. We get that. New York, Massachusetts, uh, Washington, and California. Wow. Okay. It makes sense. I get that. But they all cost of living extremely high. And then the uh, highest millennial homeownership rates are in Minnesota. <laughs> We're missing something. Now, this is a strange uh, list here. West Virginia. Wow. Indiana. That's... All right. Utah and Delaware. Delaware. Delaware? Highest millennial homeownership rates. Huh. There's like four people in Delaware. Very interesting. Very, very interesting stuff. It so is. Obviously, Jennifer. Uh, hey, neighbor. Alabama is not the hottest millennial market, is it? it? it, it we didn't no. make any of those lists. No, no. We don't make many. We make some lists that we don't want to be on. We make the uh, uh, college football Alvin list. Alvin Jefferson, how are you, man? War Eagle. Um, absolutely. So, I mean, Delaware, though. We're getting beat by Delaware? That's crazy. Apparently, I mean, who loses to Delaware? I we guess do. everybody. They have we a lot do. of money because they got what all the corporations up there. Yeah. So, well, man, this uh, this has been a busy week, and uh, yeah, yeah, Cassie's moving there, and yes. she's she's like, I knew it. it was, yes. This is gonna be incredible. Yes. So she you get to be around it. a bunch of twenty three year olds. She nailed it. So it's been a busy week. Uh, busy week. Market's going strong. Rates are moving up, but I think uh, we'll get a little little a little break in that. Um, but I think overall, everything is doing really well right now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, stock tip of the week, Royal Caribbean, RCL, bye, bye, bye. RCL, Collier's Love and RCL. Carvana. And Carvana, CVNA, Carvana, buy Carvana. Facebook came out with some good earnings a couple days ago. Their stock's back up. Man, it is wild right now with earnings season. So you're going to see some fluctuations in the market as we as we head in for what, the next week or so. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to be a lot of overreaction, so it's a buying time for if you're – if you're remotely interested in diving in, this may be a good week to get in. Because if, if the company has solid earnings, we were talking about it earlier. Just because something misses five cents, if the long, if it's a solid company making a profit, don't be afraid to put the money in. Yeah, and if you're listening to anything we're saying, and we're saying buy and hold. Yeah, buy and don't hold. Don't sue us for money you lost next yeah, week. Yeah, this is for entertainment purposes only. Yeah, yeah. Now, we're not you, licensed for that. Yeah, Courtney, though, she'll give you good not, advice. Not licensed for that information. Courtney is. No. No, she's not? No. Oh, well. But we appreciate you guys tuning in. We're going to be back next Thursday, same time, same channel. Uh, we got we just got picked up by a little local channel syndicate. No, that's oh, not yeah, us. No, that's we, not us. No, we didn't. That's okay, so us. we're going to be back here on Facebook again next week. So. All right, same time, same place. We'll see you. Thank Have you a guys. great week. Bye-bye.